Hi guys, it's Anissa. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing one of my favorite videos to film as of right now. I'm going to be reviewing another product for you guys, and particularly the new Patrick Star One Size Beauty setting powder in the color translucent. If you guys have never watched any of my reviews, basically what I do is I will test a product for three minimum days. If I feel like I need to wear it for a couple more days, I will. So far, I haven't felt like that. I'll walk you guys through my application process. I'll show you guys pictures throughout each day, and I use some of my favorite products with the product that I'm reviewing. I'll tell you guys if I think it's worth your money or not. I just do these videos to help you guys save you some money give you guys some recommendations and then kind of tell you guys some things that I personally would stay away from. If you're interested to see my thoughts and everything else that I just listed, then please make sure to keep on watching. But before you go any further, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. I have a whole reviews playlist that I will link right up here and all of my playlists are constantly updated. If you're in the mood to binge watch, I also have some other playlists that I will link down in the description box for you guys. Let's get into the video. All right guys, so as always, when we do complexion reviews, I already did my eyebrows and my eyeshadow for today. Primer, I'm going to be using the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. You guys know one of my all-time favorites. It just makes your makeup last a million bajillion years and it feels so good going onto the skin. I'm very nervous because this has a lot of really high expectations, at least for me to live up to because Patrick Starr is somebody that, I mean, I really first started watching when I started doing makeup and he was really the first guy that I had ever seen do makeup. He kind of broke that stigma that guys can't wear makeup and it's okay to be beautiful and makeup is a literally one size fits all. It's for anybody and everybody that wants to use it. If you guys also like watching makeup videos, which assume that you do if you're here, but let me know who you guys really look up to and you think has really had a positive impact on the beauty community. I'm going to quickly color correct using the LA Girl HD Pro Conceal in the color Orange Corrector, and then I'm going to bronze underneath my foundation using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Foundation Stick, and this is in the color Cool Earth. For foundation today, I'm going to be using the Too Faced Born This Way Undetectable Medium to Full Coverage Foundation, and this is in the color Chai. And I think I'm actually gonna apply this with a brush today. I have not worn makeup in a like hot, hot minute. I just haven't been feeling it. I don't know. You guys ever get like that? Like, don't get me wrong, I love makeup, but I just have not been feeling it. I'm like, uh, don't really wanna go through that right now but I think it's healthy and okay to take breaks from stuff even if you do like it, like a hobby or something like that. It starts to not become a hobby when you have to force yourself to do it because you didn't take those breaks when you didn't want to do it, which I have definitely experienced. So I think that's why it's so important to me. I don't film if I don't feel like filming. It seems like a chore. It doesn't seem like something that I do because I love to do it. At the end of the day, you are the only person that has to live with yourself. You live with your inner thoughts, your mind, how you're feeling all the time. Nobody else does. Kind of took y'all to church first second there. <laughs> I'm so glad that I do feel good without makeup, but like people try to guilt trip people into feeling bad for wanting to wear makeup because it makes them feel good. Like why do you do things in life? Because they make you happy and they make you feel good. I just, I don't understand that. All right, so I zoomed you guys in just a little bit closer because now we are on to the like most important part. Besides all over the face, under the eyes is very, very important for today. If you guys have never watched any of my videos where I review stuff, when I'm reviewing a certain product, I like to use my other favorite products with that product because kind of how I see it is if the newer product doesn't work well with products that I already love, then it's gotta go. There's no way that she can stay. She's getting evicted and it's time to move on. For under eye concealer today, I'm going to be using one of my favorites, the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer and I'm in the color Butterscotch. I figured out why I like this concealer so much. So I'm somebody, I've always preferred a more matte finish over a natural finish, but when it comes to especially underneath my eyes, I really like something that is a little bit more creamy and doesn't really have a super drying feeling because I have found that when you use products that are like that, like especially concealers that are super, super dry and matte, they don't look really good with loose powders. Trying to set something that's already been set versus where you have something that's really nice and natural and then when you put a mattifying product on top of it, it looks so good. Elf complexion sponges. These are so good if you guys are looking for affordable sponges.
I don't want my under eye to be unset for too long because I already have a lot of like wrinkles and creases and stuff underneath my eyes. So I'm going to go in with what we'll be reviewing in this video. This is the one size ultimate setting powder and this is in the color translucent. And then while I'm setting my whole face, then we can kind of like go through the claims, how much it costs. You get so much product in here. You get 1.2 ounces. Okay, it doesn't look super finely milled. If you guys can see that, it kind of is like really chunky. Before I actually set my face, I always like to go over with my sponge one last time make sure everything's really blended out and nice Okay, so just to compare, I would say this really is truly translucent, which I mentioned in one of my videos not too long ago. The word translucent, especially if you're somebody who is darker, can be very, very scary. It may be translucent to some people, but to others it's not. It kind of really changes the color of your makeup, especially if you are taking pictures. Oh my gosh. Even with my concealer and my powder, I always go over my nose because I really like this whole part of my face to be highlighted. Before I put powder on this side, you guys could see it did not change the color of anything that was on my face. It just mattified. And I didn't have to use that much product. It's filled to the very brim. Most setting powders, they will have sifters, so they have the little holes. This packaging, the one slash S, the slash is what the product comes out of, which I think is so cool. I'm just gonna read the claims on these because I like to read the claims and tell you guys the price of stuff that I'm reviewing. It helps me to navigate what I'm looking for, especially when it comes to that specific product. I feel like you can only base a product based on what it claims to do. And I was hesitant to get the darker shade, but I have so many colored loose setting powders. I wanted something translucent to try. This retails for $30, which is not bad. Laura Mercier retails for about $39.40. And these actually come in mini sizes for both, and the mini size is $16. It claims to be a super fine powder with a soft matte finish, which is one of my favorite finishes, you guys know. Blurring effect that lasts up to 14 hours and it's perfect for everyday setting and blendable baking. Claims to have performance powder microspheres that create a silky smooth texture, surface treated pigments that aid to skin adhesion, soft focus powders visibly blur fine lines and improve the look of textured skin. And it claims to be weightless, blur pores and texture, absorb excess oil and shine. And it's supposed to extend the wear of skincare and base products. And it claims to have no flashback or white cast. It doesn't claim to be transfer proof, which is so weird. A lot of the products I feel like I've been testing out recently are transfer proof. So if it does transfer onto the mask because I'll be out today, that's something I can't really clock it for if it's not something that it claims to do. My inner corners are looking a little weird that may be because I didn't blend out my concealer all the way. Most of the time I will actually go in with like an actual brush and get right into here because it's very, very hard no matter how small your sponge is to get in there at times. The rest of my under eye looks really, really pretty. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be using this powder to also set the rest of my face. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do half of it with a sponge and then half of it with a brush, kind of how I do when I'm reviewing a foundation. I don't wanna use too much though. That's my thing. With the sponge, sometimes I feel like it's kind of hard to control how much you're using. If I am setting my whole face with loose powder, I usually prefer to use a brush. But I like that this really is truly translucent. I mean, you guys can see I'm pressing it into my skin and it's really just disappearing and kind of helping to mattify everything. Especially right here, my makeup really likes to break down on me and also get really, really oily. So today I'm only going to wear this makeup for probably like eight-ish hours. I didn't realize that it claimed to be that long lasting. So maybe tomorrow I'll try to wear it for a little bit longer. I want you guys to comment down below how long you guys usually wear your makeup for because personally, I really only wear my makeup for no more than six hours a day. The point in me doing this is to help you guys save some money. Um, so if you guys do look for things that are more long lasting, then definitely let me know and I can wear the makeup for longer. Definitely has that soft matte finish that it says, but it's not too super dry. And if you ever run into that problem where you put a little bit too much powder on your face, just get a setting spray, not a matte setting spray, soak your face in it and then fan your face with either like a little portable fan or a book or something. And it will help really melt your powder and liquid products together to just really make it look like it's your skin, but better. My skin looks really good. I'm looking up close and it is not accentuating any texture. If anything, it kind of helped smooth out my texture, which I really don't expect powders to do. I don't expect anything to claim to get rid of my texture except for my primer. That did such a good job of setting me and it's also very lightweight. I'm going to take a picture really quick with some flash. It really does not have flashback. I hope you guys can see that, hold on. 
yeah, there's really no flashback at all. My nose does look a little bit lighter, but I did put a little bit extra powder on there. Usually when I test a foundation, I will do the rest of my face off camera, but since this is powder and everything else is gonna be touching it, I do wanna see how it interacts with a couple different products. So for blush today, I'm going to be using this Patrick Ta blush, and this is in the color She's Passionate. I used this in a full face of first impressions not too long ago, and I honestly haven't used it until then, but I was very, very impressed with the formula. This is a very like soft, super light pink and I found that I really gravitate towards darker colors just because I am a little bit more darker complected. But it is kind of nice to just have a really pretty, super natural wash of color. I went from somebody who did not wear blush at all to somebody who like very easily overdoes it. it does look powdery. And then I'm just going to be using this Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder and this is in the color 333B Golden Flower Crown. For setting spray today, I'm going to be using the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. Now this doesn't claim to be mattifying or anything like that. And if I am using a powder that is really mattifying and a foundation that is really mattifying, I try to stay away from a mattifying setting spray. Too Faced Born This Way Foundation isn't something that claims to be mattifying. I also don't wanna use a mattifying setting spray because I want to see how good this powder is at holding in all my oils and stuff. I'm gonna try to do like a little workout or something to kind of stimulate the oil and sweating and stuff like that. I have really been feeling the no mascara on the lower lash line look lately. So I think I'm just gonna leave my makeup like this. It is 3.48. I started filming at around three o'clock, so we're just gonna go with three o'clock and probably take it off around 10. I'm really interested to see what's gonna happen on my forehead and especially on my cheeks since this doesn't claim to be transfer proof. I'm wondering how that's going to affect, you know, rubbing the makeup off and then therefore that not having that oil shine control anymore. I'm very happy with what I look like. The skin looks really good. I'll take pictures as always every couple hours for you guys maybe some videos if I feel like I need to, and then I will see you guys later. On a scale of one to 10, how tired do I look? It is 9.43, so it's been basically seven hours. The first one I took at 3.54, which is right here. And then the second one I took at 5.25. The last one I took at 9.02, which is basically an hour ago. Between five and nine, I don't know what my face looked like because I wasn't in a mirror. You guys can look at 5.30. I look literally the exact same as I did when I first started filming. So that would be about what, like three hours into the makeup wear. Definitely my oils broke through right in here, which does not surprise me at all. I was really curious to see how much oil was going to shine through. And I wore a mask for like a good amount of time, but I actually did not have that much makeup in my mask at all. I'm really surprised that I look as good as I do because I did not use a mattifying foundation or a mattifying primer. The only thing that I used was powder. I have to use at least a mattifying primer, a mattifying foundation, or a mattifying setting spray. And I didn't use any of those. Um, I don't really have any makeup left on my nose, just right in like this spot and this spot. I figured that my eyes were going to start looking weird, especially up in here, and I was right. You can just see like all of my wrinkles and creases and stuff. Yeah, my lines and my creases are definitely showing through, especially right underneath my eyes. Right here looks really good. My cheeks do not look bad at all. I do look a little bit more textured than I did when I first had it on. My cheeks look very good as far as shine and it doesn't look like the makeup really rubbed off at all. Not really like a miracle work or anything like that. And I never have found any powder that has completely not like sunken in or like move when I wear makeup for this long. It's not bad, but it's not like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. Seven out of 10, like a C. We will see tomorrow how it does. All right guys, it is day two. Again, I already did my eyebrows and my eyeshadow. We are just going to hop into primer and I'm actually going to be pairing two primers together today. The first one that I'm going to be using is the Huda Beauty Water Jelly Hydrating Primer, which I just did a review over this and the stick foundation, which I will link up here for you guys if you're interested in watching that. And then I am going to be pairing it with the e.l.f. Poreless Face Primer. What I like about these individually, number one, this one feels so good on the skin. It's so moisturizing. It just makes you feel like you're ready to put makeup on your face. And then obviously, this one is going to help with my pores that are absolutely huge, especially right in here, right in here. They just love to be the size of Mars. I have been liking to pair a hydrating primer with a like pore filling primer or something of that sort. Since it is winter time, I like to have the hydration.
I'm just going to fast forward through this part because I'm using the two same color correctors and bronzers that I did yesterday. Today for foundation, I'm going to be using one of my new favorites. This is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation and I'm in the color Macau Medium Deep 4. And I also just did a very in-depth review of this foundation if you guys would like to go check that out. Now I am a little bit curious to see if this, this foundation is actually going to help the translucent powder, but we'll see because I know how this performs on its own. For concealer, I am going to be using the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I mentioned in my Best of Beauty for 2020 that I do like the 16 hour version of this, but that one is a little bit more drying, has a lot more of a matte finish versus this one has a more natural finish. Yesterday, I did notice that my powder was looking a little bit weird, like really up close into my eye in this area. So I'm just going to take a brush and really blend out that concealer, just like I mentioned yesterday. And I'm gonna see if me doing this kind of helps. And if not, then I'm just gonna kind of have to come to the realization that it's the powder. I don't do this often enough. I picked up this little tip from Juicy Jazz. Sponges are great and I really never use brushes underneath my eyes unless I'm feeling really different. But sometimes it's just better to go in with a little brush and really make sure your product is blended out, especially underneath the eyes so it doesn't cake up really weird. much product at all oh my gosh yeah my under eyes especially my inner corners look a lot better than they did yesterday and i really think blending out the products with a brush helped 100 percent i look very very filtered like especially right through here i think i prefer just from what i experienced yesterday with this powder, I prefer using a brush to set my face. I know some people like using a sponge. It's just never really been my dig. It's finely milled, but it's not because it really like chunks up, especially in the pan. Let me take a picture for you guys. It's like you kind of have to like break it down with a brush to get it to not clump up. But look, it looks really good on the skin. Once you put like a mattifying setting spray on, it kind of protects your powder and your foundation, and everything else from the outside element. So I'm just going to use a regular setting powder today because I really want to see how this powder reacts with the environment, how it's going to control my oils, aside from having on like a pretty good foundation. The thing that I was probably the most afraid of when trying this powder is like, okay, is it actually going to be translucent or is it going to have some type of color to it? And I'm really, really glad that it does not do that. I have not found any powder besides the Laura Mercier powder that doesn't leave some type of color or cast on your skin and kind of like wash you out a little bit. So that has not done that. My skin honestly looks better than it did yesterday. Like as far as interacting with the other products on my face, definitely looks better to me today than it did yesterday. For highlighter today, I'm going to use one of my favorites. This is the Becca highlighter in the color Chocolate Geode. I actually did my eyes before my setting spray, which I never do. I'm just gonna use this NYX Bear With Me multitasking spray to set my face real fast. All right guys, this is the completed look. I look really good. I don't know if you guys can see, I, this might be from my hair, but it's like the, let me just blend it out. Okay, yeah, I don't know what that was, but it's like the product, it was like a splotch. There's like a spot where there was no product, but there was, I don't know, but it looks fine now. Surprisingly, I don't have much to say, and I found that when I don't have much to say, it means that I don't hate it, but I'm not like, oh my gosh, I love this, this is so amazing. So like I said yesterday, I'm still kind of like in that middle ground. Right now it is 12 o'clock, I started filming at 11, so I'm gonna put 11 as my start time, and I'll probably have this on to like seven. I'm not gonna have a mask on today, so we're just gonna let this work, it's magic. So I will see you guys in a little bit. Okay, so I'm about to do a little workout, a little yoga, but this is what my face it's looking like I look matte, but at the same time, I just look like naturally healthy, if that makes sense. It looks really good for it to be almost hour seven. The only thing that's like really bothering me 
is my nose just look really, really oily. And I think that's because I have been so hot all day. And I told you guys when I sweat, I sweat mainly from my nose. But my forehead still looks really good for it to be this far. Okay, so I literally just got done doing a little, wouldn't even call it a workout. I really just stretched and did a little bit of yoga to kind of, you know, loosen me up. But I look the same. It's six o'clock, so I've been wearing this for about seven hours. I am really surprised that I still look this matte, especially up in here. And my under eyes look a lot, a lot better than they did yesterday. I swear to you, using that little brush really, really helped. I don't have any complaints. I will see you guys literally in 12 hours because I'll be up at like 5.30. So I'll see you then. We are going to ignore the hair because I have a very long day ahead of me. Two days later, I was supposed to film yesterday and I completely woke up late, which never happens. I just decided to put this video a day late. I would rather do one really last good day of reviewing than rush it and try to upload it tonight. It is currently 6 a.m. and I work until 10 o'clock tonight. So this makeup is really gonna be on for 16 hours. Just going to prime my face really quickly using this NYX pore filler. I really hate getting off my uploading schedule, but if it's a day late, I usually don't mind because what I'll do, instead of posting every four days, I'll just post that video and then post another one in three. Today is just one of those days that you wake up and you know you're gonna be up for a while. And I think this last day, definitely wearing it for longer than what I usually would, is gonna help me determine like my super final thoughts because I feel like I'm kind of on the rocks right now. Just using the same four foundation today, I wanted to make sure that I used something that had a more natural finish just so we can really put this oil control, shine control to the real test. So I'm just going to be using the L'Oreal Paris infallible 24 hour fresh wear foundation and this is in the color 515 sponges are like the best thing for your skin in the morning they just feel so good oh guys is this how today's gonna go for concealer today i'm going to be using the jouer high essential coverage concealer and i am in the color coffee this is a concealer i bought on a whim and i didn't realize how much i would like it i actually like using this for my brows too because it is a little bit more on the thick side i'm happy i'm not wearing eyeshadow because i can actually put the powder on my eyelids too because my eyelids do tend to get a little bit oily which is also why i've started to use eyeshadow primer within the past year because it helps my eyeshadow to last all day long i'm just really blending out my concealer i am going to set At first, when I put it under this eye, I thought it kind of lightened the side of my eye, but it just mattified it. So this side looked matte and this side didn't. So it kind of threw me off a little bit. If you do use too much, it can make whatever part of your face you put it on a little bit lighter. So you just have to be careful. And I mean, you really have to be like that with any powder because if you put on too much powder, it can make you look very cakey. My eyelids look really good and my under eye looks really good so far. I don't know if that's my foundation, my concealer, or the actual powder, but it kind of like set into the lines just a little bit. It does bother me that this is a bit chunky because it does get stuck in the brush but that might be just me being picky again that's like what these videos are for and i was talking to my boyfriend about this yesterday because he was talking about some video game he had been waiting to come out for like two years or something like that and when it came out it really just was not up to par for him and i told him i said you know that's so funny because i think even in the beauty community when it comes to makeup it can be like that sometimes like if a product is so overhyped people have really 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 high expectations so your expectations are like all the way up here through the roof and then say it like falls right here you're still you're more disappointed than you would be if you didn't have really high hopes for it if you guys agree and if you know what i'm talking about let me know if you've ever had a product that, that did that and i think too i like putting on more blush than i need because i can use a beauty blender and go back over it with foundation and it just makes it look even more natural
All right, guys, this is the finished look. It's definitely more natural. I wanna swatch it for you guys. It almost looks like a yellowy banana color. Kind of made my skin look ashy. Yeah, it kind of made my skin look ashy, but again, I don't know if I'd ever just put translucent powder on my face. The one good thing about this for me is that when I see you guys again, I know that my day will be pretty much over and I can get in bed. So I will see you guys then. I made it. So many points at today thought that I just was ready to give up. It is currently 10, 19 p.m. I'll show you that way you believe me while I was at work I had the chance to edit my video day one and day two if you guys have ever watched a movie or even if you've read a book or a story, the more that you read it, the more that you'll analyze it and the more that you get from it. I was re-watching the footage and I was able to kind of look at everything that was happening and kind of hear what I was saying. Really just like connect some puzzle pieces that I was not able to connect before. I didn't feel like my oils were breaking through until about 2 or 3 p.m. So I took a nap from like 1 to 2 and then when I woke up from my nap I was like, oh, I can kind of see some stuff going on in here. I also realized I do have a lighter coverage foundation on so you guys will be able to see my makeup has like broken up in ways I did not think was possible but I also genuinely have never even worn makeup for this long I can't sit here and say that that's because of the powder I can't say it's because of the foundation but what I can say is that I would not recommend wearing this powder past 10 hours and that's pushing it. So I wanna show you guys one picture in particular that was taken around 7 p.m. I had never seen any flashback in all the pictures that I'd taken until I saw that picture. And you can see underneath my eyes, flashback is so bad. My under eyes, although the makeup has moved a little bit, they're really the only part of my face that has stayed matte. Besides like right down here and right down here, but everything else is just an oil slick. I really have like no makeup at all left on my nose at all. I can see where splotches of blush are missing from where my makeup is missing. Let me start off by saying I am very, 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 very glad that I tested this powder for more than eight hours because I, number one, it was important for me to see if it really held up to that 14 hour standard that it said it did, which I mean, we can see it didn't. You can see in my 14 hour picture that it didn't. It says that the powder is super fine. I will say going on an application, it is super fine, but in the actual container itself, it is very chunky. And one thing I did find is that when I was using a brush all over the face it was like it was so chunky that the product was actually getting stuck in clumps in the brush I was using more product than I needed to it definitely does have that soft matte finish from day one and day two I looked pretty much the same and I wore that makeup for seven to eight hours as far as the blurring effect goes oil control all that stuff if you are somebody that wears makeup for more than eight hours a day I would not purchase this however if you're somebody who wears makeup for less than eight hours a day I really like the way that it performed. You guys could see there was very, very little difference in my skin. Your makeup kind of morphs with your skin and the oils and everything that it creates. So your makeup is not going to look the exact same all day. And if it does, then please let me know what you were using because I need to get on that. The only thing I really noticed was that in my cheeks, my texture was a little bit accentuated, but that kind of always happens, especially when your makeup starts to kind of seep into your skin after a couple of hours. My under eyes looked really good the first two days and really used to all these little lines under my eyes. They don't bother me at this point. I just like to look really highlighted and blurred and I'm good to go. On day one, you guys saw in that picture, my nose did look a little bit lighter than the rest of my face. And that was because I used more powder on my nose than the rest of my face. Because sitting under these studio lights, uh, sometimes I get really hot and when I sweat, I just sweat solely on my nose. I don't know why. I think there's a very fine line with that flashback, the no flashback. If you don't use too much, you won't have the flashback, but if you go overboard, you definitely will. Translucent. This one is hard for me because like I said, if you go overboard, it's obviously not going to be translucent. And even in that picture, I had the flashback. So I was like, okay, I, I'm not really sure like what is going on. And then even when I swatched it on my hand, it made my hand look a little bit ashy. So I think, I think I really was a fan of it underneath my eyes because I really don't ever use translucent powder all over my face. Rarely does that ever happen. I usually use translucent loose powder underneath my eyes and then I will use a colored powder all over my face, loose powder. If you are any darker than me, I would recommend using the other shade that's supposed to be, it's like medium deep. I don't even know what it's called, but I would not recommend using this. I think you would get flashback with it and I think it would change the color of your face. Would I repurchase? With drugstore, 
loose powders, I'm a lot more lenient just because they are a lot more affordable and I like to have a lot of affordable options versus when you're spending your money, like you better make sure that it's something good. So me personally, I think I am going to repurchase, but I think I'm just gonna use it underneath my eyes. I really don't think that I will use it all over my face. The only time I would ever use this all over my face is if I'm using a really full coverage foundation because you guys can see today, I used a more lighter coverage foundation and it didn't really work the best on its own because it truly like kind of got <laughs> put on this island by itself and tested. But it looked really, really good with the NARS Soft Matte, which is a foundation that has a really good longevity and also a really good coverage. I need to use this whole thing before I can tell you if I'm gonna repurchase it or not. Is it worth the money? I think to a certain extent it is worth the money because my personal experience, I have not really found a lot of good drugstore loose powders. Most of the ones that I have used have a lot of flashback. They are not very finely milled. They're just not the same. They're not a Laura Mercier. And I know I compare everything to Laura Mercier, but I can compare everything to Laura Mercier because it's my favorite. Would I use this off camera? Yeah, I could definitely see myself grabbing for this off camera. I wanted to mention, I wanted to look at my eyelids to see how matte they stayed. They look just about the same as they did this morning. They did sink into my lines a little bit because I do have a lot of lines and stuff on my eyelids but it still looks matte, just like underneath my eyes. Is this black girl friendly? I think this shade, if you are anything darker than me, like I said, I would not recommend even trying to use this all over your face. I just don't think that that would work good. And I'm solely saying that based off of that one picture that I took, because all it takes is one time. I would give this like a seven and a half out of 10. I think the only thing that I was a little bit thrown off with is because it just wasn't consistent. So the only thing that I would say that this really does not stand up to is the longevity. And that is, that can be so loosely interpreted because longevity can mean something different to everybody. Like, Eight hours to me is a long, long time versus 14 hours to somebody, that might be a long, long time, especially for somebody that works 12 hour shifts. If you are just looking for a powder to try and you just wanna go out on a whim, I would say give this a shot. And I'm only saying that because it's not absolutely terrible, but it's very hard for me to distinguish because usually I'm somebody I really like something or I can tell you I'm really not gonna use it or reach for it a lot. I'm not there yet with this product. I've definitely tried worse, let me tell you that. If you guys enjoy seeing these videos, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. I do have a reviews playlist that I linked either in the beginning of this video or I'll put it up here. I have all of my other playlists linked down in the description box if you guys like to binge watch. If there's a certain product that you would like to see me test out and just do a specific review full video on, please let me know in the comments. And if you guys have tried this powder, please let me know what you think of it. I'm so conflicted still and it's driving me insane. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.